The humanitarian situation for the suffering civilians of Gaza is very severe. It's a challenge for all countries, for the international community, for international agencies to do the utmost that they can to deliver the assistance that is required. That's something which the United States is committed to helping in, to leading in. We do so right now in a way which has begun, but is not yet adequate. Uh, that's something the President of the United States has noted very clearly. It's not enough. Uh, we want to move it forward. Uh, there are difficulties in doing so. It's a situation we are working on day and night to improve, to get to the people of Gaza what they need. The United States has led, uh, since this effort began, international coordination to make sure that assistance can move uh, through the only channel now available, the Rafah corridor, the Rafah terminal. Um, it's assistance uh, whose volume is not enough. We want to see enough assistance move through that corridor as can be managed by the UN implementers on the other side in Gaza itself. That's the objective. Um, it is complicated by the need to ensure that what goes into Gaza is indeed uh, humanitarian assistance and that it is managed on the Gazan side of the corridor in a fashion that directs that assistance to the needful civilians of Gaza and not to Hamas. We are coordinating closely with the United Nations, with all of the UN agencies, with international partners who are contributing assistance to make sure that as much as possible goes in and that when it goes in, it is able to be distributed to the deserving civilians of Gaza. This is a challenge. We understand the magnitude of that challenge, uh, but it had to start somewhere. And that's what we have done. We've started it, but it's not enough. It has to be increased. It has to be sustained. It has to be continuous. We are focused um, right now uh, with Israel, with other UN partners, with implementers on how we do address the issue of fuel. We know it's critical. We understand that. We need to get fuel to the humanitarian infrastructure institutions like hospitals, as well as the trucks that distribute assistance as rapidly as we can. But we need to do so in a manner that does not allow Hamas to further predate, to further seize fuel for their own purposes. And let's be clear here, Hamas in its tunnels has fuel. The hospitals do not. One has to make an obvious conclusion from this, and it's a broad one. Hamas's concern now, as it has always been, is for its own interests, its own ambitions, not for the people of Gaza, except to use them as shields. Uh, and I believe there is broad understanding that in a very careful fashion to avoid Hamas diversion, fuel must move to certain specific places in need, not just hospitals, but other types of facilities and certainly to the distribution trucks. It's understood and we are working, we are leading on that issue right now with Israel and with others. Well, let's look at the situation of those trying to leave Gaza. There are many, many Americans, families. There are many other nationalities with their citizens, with their citizens' families, organizations um, who cannot leave Gaza. They cannot leave Gaza because Hamas at present blocks their departure through Rafah terminal. Yes, there are wounded, and there is a theoretical way in which, uh, in a manner which is careful and understood by all sides, uh, could move into place. But once again, Hamas has to allow those broader numbers whom it is denying entry to the Rafah terminal for exit. That has to change.